Okay. All right. So we were to uh, uh, discuss uh, our analysis of public health issues um, when we analyze very large amount of uh, social media content. Um, the focus is on mental health and addiction related analysis and uh, what we call social quality of index. Uh, AI Institute of University of South Carolina, Rice State University, Georgia State University are participants or, or the members for the team belong to these. So we all know of the massive impact of uh, um, this pandemic. Uh, and this has um, also resulted in a significant uh, impact on depression, anxiety, other mental health issues, on addictions and substance abuse. So we said, well, can we understand how um, various policy decisions, uh, social, economic, public health policies, uh, and the choices that um, uh, government and policymakers have made uh, affect the well-being of uh, society, members of the society. And uh, our, our, our toolbox is knowledge enhanced social media analysis. So um, the, we position it as the following. Um, we capture the data between the period as you see here, March, 2020 and end of July, January, 2021 that covered two major COVID-19 waves. Um, we had uh, 25 quarreling terms. Uh, we collected 12, 12 billion tweets. In addition to this uh, data, uh, we had a lot of other data to be used. And that is a very important methodical part of the uh, study because um, it's not just analyzing, uh, social media data is not enough. You need a lot of other relevant um, uh, uh, information to be able to analyze the data. So we uh, had a location related information. Uh, we uh, looked at specific subreddits to train our language models. And uh, we had uh, mental health related knowledge bases, DSM-5, drug abuse ontology, DBPDA, Wikidata, UMLS. Additionally, we had to look at on the ground events. Uh, for example, um, uh, you know, loan relief, household income relief, testing policy, all those things that, um, all those choices that various state uh, leaders made or federal, uh, you know, policymakers made. Uh, so we need to also have understanding of what happened when and where. Um, and there were other events that also we have to understand. Our focus was on understanding the um, you know, content on social media related to mental health. So you can see some examples here. Uh, and um, we developed a, an empirical measure we call social quality index. And it aggregates mental health components and addiction and substance use disorder components. Right? So uh, analyzing the social media data for these components to come up with social quality index. Uh, there is a pretty comprehensive infrastructure as analysis of this kind is pretty daunting. So you have Twitter data, but uh, you have news article. I'll, I'll quickly mention why we have news article. You have various knowledge base, and then you have to do a whole variety of analysis you can see there in the second vertical uh, box. Uh, then it goes to language models and topic models, semantic mappings, so deeper understanding and uh, you know our team uh, works on knowledge infused learning uh, so we have a particular uh, you know uh, enhanced deep learning methods to uh, that uses knowledge uh, of the domain to better understand the language from there on to understand uh, content related to uh, depression anxiety addiction substance use all in the context of covid leading to uh, SQI calculations. There were language model training component and all those that are not shown here in this picture. So what are the innovations? Uh, we use news to continuously identify new entities of interest then to COVID. And in this context, we use location extractions using geo names, open street map and other things. We use multiple vocabularies and knowledge graph for semantic extraction. We use specialized subreddit corpus uh, for language uh, model training and topic models. And uh, we train classifiers to scale the analysis of big data. So we couldn't do the you know, ana analysis. To analyze such large amount of data, we had to uh, create these classifiers and then 
understand depression, addiction, anxiety, and other issues. With that uh, background, I'm going to pass on to Valerie to explain what we found. Thank you, Amit. Let me give you an idea of the kind of analyses that become possible with the kind of capabilities that Amit just described. So here are some sample state graphs of COVID rates and SQI over time. Like Brandon, we think time is absolutely the issue here. So COVID uh, rates per capita is on the left y-axis and SQI is on the right axis. Up is bad, down is good. Time is on the x-axis and there's a discontinuity there marked with the hash marks. And I'm not expecting you to, to read these graphs uh, carefully, except that you'll certainly notice that there's very little correlation between the social quality index that we've identified and COVID prevalence. There is one place, whoops, back one bit on that just for a second. There is one place that you'll notice a correlation. Uh, and that is towards the end. And we think that that is likely reflecting a latent variable. That is the holiday season. That's the winter holiday season. And so probably what's going on is that the winter holidays are increasing both COVID rates. And we already know that the, the winter holidays are very challenging for mental health. So that makes a lot of good sense. And it serves as an informal validation of the SQI metric. Next slide. No, I can't advance, so I don't know what. Uh, Lauren, uh, I can't advance. Let's see. I may be able to share on your behalf. Hang on. Did you try just clicking on the slide or using the up or down arrows? Did you try a few different options? OK. There you go. Okay. It's Yay, okay. So um, one of the points that we want to make is that the holidays, of course, are not the only event that we can now examine. And this is a graph for the state of Washington. Um, and what we're showing you there is the policy changes that we've identified in news aligned with the various periods that we have marked out there with the vertical lines. Um, so our point is that it's now possible to look for patterns relating this social quality index to the implementation of policy by state. Next slide, Amit. So SQI is a standardized measure. It's independent of state population or amount of social media activity. And because it's standardized in that way, we can compare states. And we've done, next slide, some state clustering um, to see if we can discern patterns. And you see that uh, Connecticut, Louisiana, New Jersey, Nevada, et cetera, uh, all seem to be following the same kind of pattern. SQI is bad at the beginning, it gets better uh, and then gets worse. This is for a, a, a truncated um, high resolution time period. And then a different cluster, Florida, Georgia, uh, Michigan, et cetera, have an SQI better, SQI worse pattern. Um, so we can reveal some of these patterns over time. Of course, we have to do more longitudinal and time series analyses to pull out the potential causes, but it does look to us like it's the economic issues that are gonna be the major factor here. Hmm. Next slide. So what is now possible with the tools that um, the South Carolina team has developed? We have a knowledge-driven analysis of social media at an abstract level, and it provides a very high resolution data set, both with respect to time and space. It is rapid. Um, and it provides separable measures of mental health that are not feasible in survey metrics. We can get lots and lots of data uh, spread out over uh, large portions of space and time. And that's the kind of data that you need in order to pull out the confounds and begin to evaluate whether or not your policy decisions were having an effect on your population. Um, so this is a really um, important research tool that advances our capabilities um, in science. Um, but more broadly, um, 
it enables real-time monitoring and preparation for mitigation. And of course, it supports policymakers in general. Mm. And that is our presentation for you.